another reading lesson. For today's lesson, you will need your text of The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe, and you will need a pencil. Okay, before we begin today's lesson, I would like you to read independently from the beginning of chapter two to the end of page 27, where we left off reading yesterday. So pause the video now and do that reading. Great, so today is lesson four, Thursday's lesson, and today you're going to be using effective phrasing to add meaning. Before we start reading for today's part of the text, you'll need to make sure you're ready. So you will need a pen or a pencil in your writing hand for text marking, and you will need your other hand to be free so that your tracking finger can track the text that we are reading. Remember, if you need some more time for text marking to write down those definitions, you can pause the video at any time. So we're going to start reading today from the top of page 28. They both got up and left the tea things on the table. And Mr. Tumnus once more put up his umbrella and gave Lucy his arm and they went out into the snow. The journey back was not at all like the journey to the Fawn's cave. They stole along as quickly as they could without speaking a word. And Mr. Tumnus kept, the dark, kept, kept to the darkest places. Okay, so they stole along. Let's get our pencil and text mark that word stole along. So underline the word stole along. Draw an arrow to a space. Okay, so stole along means that they were sneaking not to be seen. They were sneaking along not to be seen. And here you can see a picture of somebody who is doing just that, sneaking along so that they're not seen, stole along. They stole along as quickly as they could without speaking a word. And Mr. Tumnus kept to the darkest places. Lucy was relieved when they reached the lamppost again. She was relieved. Okay, here's a picture of a person who is feeling relieved. So have a look at that picture. How do you think Lucy was feeling when they reached the lamppost again? A bit of thinking time. Can you tell me? Well done. If you said that she's able to relax, then you were right. So draw, underline the word relieved, draw an arrow, do some space in your text and text mark, able to relax. Do you know your way home from here, daughter of Eve, said Mr. Tumnus. Lucy looked very hard between the trees and could just see in the distance a patch of light that looked like daylight. Yes, she said, I can see the wardrobe door. Turn the page. Then be off home as quick as you can, said the fawn. And can you ever forgive me for what I meant to do? Why, of course I can, said Lucy, shaking him heartedly by the hand. OK, she's shaking him heartedly. Which means she's shaking his hand a lot. Let's practice. So a little shake would be like this. And shaking his hand heartedly is like this. So underline the word heartedly and text mark a lot. She's shaking his hand a lot. And I do hope you won't get into dreadful trouble on my account. OK, dreadful. Underline the word dreadful. And text mark. It's bad, very bad. If something is dreadful, it's very bad. So let's text mark very bad. I hope you won't get into dreadful trouble on my account, on my account. So let's text mark that because of me, because of me. So I do hope you won't get into dreadful trouble on my account. 
I do hope you won't get into really bad trouble because of me. Farewell, daughter of Eve. Farewell. Farewell is how they used to say goodbye in the olden days. So goodbye. Farewell. Goodbye. Farewell, daughter of Eve, said he. Perhaps I may keep the handkerchief. Okay, perhaps. There it is. Underline it. Draw an arrow to some space. Perhaps. Maybe. Text mark, maybe. Perhaps I may keep the handkerchief. Maybe I may keep the handkerchief. Rather, that's Lucy saying, yes, you can keep the handkerchief. Yes. Rather, said Lucy, and then ran towards the far off patch of daylight as quickly as her legs would carry her. And presently, right now, Instead of rough branches brushing past her, she felt coats, and instead of crunching snow under her feet, she felt wooden boards. And all at once, she found herself jumping out of the wardrobe into the same empty room from which the whole adventure had started. She shut the wardrobe door tightly behind her and looked around, panting for breath. Okay, she's panting for breath, which means quick, deep breath. Okay, so it's a little bit like gasping. Quick, deep breaths. Let's text mark. Quick, deep breaths. It was still raining and she could hear the voices of the others in the passage. I'm here, she shouted. I'm here. I've come back. I'm all right. Great. Now I would like you to pause the video and read the text that we've read together today. So that's all of page 28 and all of page 29. Great. So the LO today was to add meaning to your reading using the correct phrasing. Now we have done this type of lesson before, so we'll do it in the same way again. So I'll read part of the page and then you will pause the video and read the rest of it. So, Remember from the last lesson, when we start a sentence, our tone of voice goes up. OK, it goes up. And then when we come to the end of a sentence, to the end by a full stop, our tone of voice goes down. OK, so let's have a practice. They both got up and left the tea things on the table, pause for a comma, and Mr Tumnus once more put his umbrella up put up his umbrella and gave Lucy his arm. Pause for a comma. And they went out into the snow. Okay, my tone's coming down as the sentence ends because it's a full stop. And then I'm stopping to take a breath. So let's try that sentence again. They both got up and left the tea things on the table. And Mr. Tomnus once more put up his umbrella and gave Lucy his arm and they went out into the snow. Okay, the journey back was not at all like the journey to the Falls cave. Pause. They stole away as quickly as they could. Pause. Without speaking a word. Pause. And Mr. Tomnus kept to the darkest places. My tone of voice goes down towards the end of the sentence. So there's a full stop. Now I'm going to stop and take a breath. So let's just read from the, from the start of the page again. They both got up and left the tea things on the table. And Mr. Tumnus once more put up his umbrella and gave Lucy his arm. And they went out into the snow. The journey back was not at all like the journey to the Fawn's cave. They stole along as quickly as they could without speaking a word. And Mr. Tumnus kept to the darkest places. Okay, so now I would like you to pause the video, read from the beginning of the page, paying attention to the tone of your voice, when your tone's higher, when your tone's lower, when you take a pause, when you see a comma, and then you stop, your tone goes down and you stop to take a breath.
when there's a full stop at the end of the sentence. Have a go at that now. That was wonderful. Now let's have a go at doing the same thing for page 29. Then be off home as quick as you can, said the fawn. And ca can you ever forgive me for what I meant to do? Now this here, our tone goes up at the end of the sentence. Can you remember why that is? Have a think. Can you tell me? That's right, because he's asking a question. He's saying, can you ever forgive me for what I meant to do? He's asking her a question. And when you ask a question, your tone of voice goes higher. Okay. Can you ever forgive me for what I meant to do? Why, of course I can, said Lucy, shaking him heartily by the hand. Okay, and my tone went down at the end of that sentence because there's a full stop and I'm going to pause to take a breath. And I do hope you won't get into dreadful trouble on my account. Okay, so my voice went higher at the beginning of the sentence and down at the end of the sentence for the full stop. So let's try reading that again from the top of page 29. Then be off home as quick as you can, said the fawn, and ca can you forgive me for what I meant to do? Why, of course I can, said Lucy, shaking him heartily by the hand. Great. So now I would like you to pause the video, start reading from the top of page 29 and read to the bottom of page 29. Make sure you pay attention to your tone. So higher at the start of a sentence, lower at the end of the sentence, unless it's a question mark, which means at the end of the sentence, your tone needs to go up. You need to pause when you see a comma and take a breath when you see a full stop. Have a go at that now. That was amazing. Right, you're ready for your independent task. You need to read all of the text that we've read out, that we've read so far out loud to yourself. So that's the beginning of chapter two up to the end of page 29. You need to pay attention to your tone and your phrasing. You have a practice by yourself, first of all, and when you're confident and ready, you can record yourself reading to me for 30 seconds. And then that's what you need to submit as a response for your activity. Now you did this really well last time, year three. I'm really looking forward to seeing your responses. We only need 30 seconds. You can either record yourself, showing yourself um, on the recording, or you can do a voice recording only, so I can just hear your voice and can't see you. Or you can point the camera somewhere else while you are recording, so I'll be able to hear you. I hope you've enjoyed today's lesson, and I'll see you tomorrow for another one.